The smartest way to use protein to build muscle, science explained. Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Diamonds and I'm the founder of sculptbyscience.com. I've had the privilege of coaching over a thousand clients over the decade, blending my medical background into evidence-based practices to achieve these outstanding results. I've spent years exploring complex science of muscle growth and protein intake. And today I'm going to explain to you in the simplest way possible, all with science-based evidence. So by the end of the video, you will learn all the information you need on protein in the context of bodybuilding. We'll go over the five most controversial questions regarding protein. For example, how much protein do you actually need every day? What's the right amount of protein per meal? Supplements versus whole foods, which one wins? Animal-based protein versus plant-based protein, which one is better? And how much protein is too much? Is there a limit? Once you get all the answers to these questions, we've pretty much covered everything you need to know about protein in terms of fat loss. Let's get started. Our body needs three main macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fats. Let's start simple. What's protein? Protein is an essential micronutrient in our body. Its main function is building muscle mass and tissue repair. The building blocks of protein are amino acids. Think of them like Lego pieces that come together to make a structure of protein. Not all amino acids are created equally. There are 20 different types and they all fall into two main categories. One is essential amino acids. Our body can't make them, so we have to go get them from food and we have nine of them. We also have non-essential amino acids. Our body can make them on its own and they come for 11 of them. Now, the first and foremost important question, how much protein do you actually need every day? The recommended dietary allowance for protein is 0.36 grams per pound of body weight. So quick math, if you're 170 pounds, you need to take 61 grams of protein per day in total. Keep in mind, this is just to meet the basic needs for your daily body functions for a normal person who's not lifting weights or bodybuilding or trying to lose weight. With that being said, when you start lifting in the gym, when you're bodybuilding, you need an increase of protein. Why? Because when you hit the gym, you're actively creating micro tears in your muscle and rebuilding these damages is how you gain muscle and strength. So you're creating a demand and to meet it, you're going to need more protein to fuel the muscle growth and repair. So how much protein you need as a bodybuilder? How much should you take? This depends on where you are in your fitness journey, whether you're bulking, cutting, or you're going through body recomposition where you're building muscle and losing fat at the same time, which is possible. So let's start with the most interesting one, body recomposition. And you're eating at a maintenance, for example, when you're not after losing or gaining fat, this is when you're eating at maintenance calories. And the good news is muscle gain is still possible. Your body has enough energy to keep everything running smoothly. And you can aim for the sweet spot of 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight, coupled with the right workout routine to build new muscle tissue without needing the extra calories. Now you may be asking what number exactly. If you're a person who likes to feel full and you enjoy eating more protein, then I always recommend on the higher end. If you're a person who enjoys eating more carbs or fats, then go for 0.7. And that's aside from the goals that we need. Simply put, you can still make gains while you're eating at maintenance. Just keep your protein intake in check and train progressively. Some sources even suggest higher than one gram of protein per pound of body weight. One study compared two groups. Group one consumed the baseline of protein at 0.9 grams per pound per day. And the second group consumed 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day and on a high caloric intake. Both groups were performing heavy resistance training and the results showed that the high protein group experienced a far greater decrease in fat mass and body fat percentage even though they didn't gain body weight compared to the normal protein group. However, many studies have shown that there is no use to going higher than 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. Now in my experience, if you ask me, I always opt for higher protein. You may not get more benefit in terms of muscle mass for eating more protein. However, I have realized that my clients and including myself get better results in terms of diet adherence and following a plan eating more protein because protein is so satiating. So I've always gone for a higher protein for that very fact and I love eating meats. If that is you, I always recommend one gram or more. But this is my recommendation. If you're performing cardio or training very hard or you have a low body fat, I recommend sticking to the higher end of the recommended of one gram per pound. But if you have a higher body fat and you're trying to build muscle while eating and maintaining, you can stick to the lower end of 0.7 grams per pound. Number two, but what if you're cutting? If you're cutting and you're eating fewer calories to lose fat, your body needs more protein to help preserve your 
your muscle mass. This helps make sure you don't lose muscle along the way. And we only lose that weight as fat. Simple as that. According to many studies done in this area, a protein intake of roughly 0.8 grams to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight seems to be the sweet spot for cutting. And if you've created a deficit and you're training at high intensity, I would recommend sticking to the higher end. Now again, through my experience working with thousands of people, I cannot say that there's a massive difference between the person who's eating 1 gram and 1.2. So decide on how full you want to feel. If you want to feel fuller, go for the higher end. One study of 20 young healthy athletes looked at the difference between a low protein intake of 0.45 grams per pound of body weight and a high protein intake of 1 gram per pound of body weight during a period of caloric reduction. As you can see in this graph, the low protein group lost more weight than the high protein group, but they lost the same amount of fat. But catch this, the group with the lower protein lost 3.5 pounds of muscle, whereas the high protein group only lost about 0.66 pounds of muscle. So even though the group lost the same amount of weight on the scale, they ended up with a higher body fat percentage because they lost so much muscle in the process, which is why so many people end up also looking skinny fat. What if you're bulking? For those of you on a bulking journey, while increasing your overall caloric intake, it's crucial during this phase also to get your essential amount of protein intake. Multiple research studies have shown that consuming between 0.7 to 1 gram of protein for every pound of your weight is ideal for maximizing muscle gain. This is the same for body recomposition. The chances of losing protein breakdown while on a caloric surplus is very, very low, which is in this scenario, sticking to the lower end is safe for almost everyone. Let's move on to question number two. What is the right amount of protein per meal? Can you have all of your daily protein intake in one meal? And how much of it does your body use for building muscle? I'll keep this very, very simple. After you've finished a workout, your body builds new muscle through a process called muscle protein synthesis. And protein is the main stimulus for this process. It's like oil to get your car started and to keep it going. Earlier studies claim that 20 to 30 grams per meal is enough to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So this number used to be the magic number to max out your muscle protein synthesis and anything else would be excreted and not used. However, recent studies called this number into question suggesting that it isn't the full picture. While an exact amount of protein per meal hasn't been agreed upon, new studies have found that 40 grams of whey protein stimulated muscle protein synthesis more than 20 grams, especially after a full body workout. So the amount of protein your body can probably use is higher than what we previously thought. And another study looked at how your body handles high amounts of protein, and they tested two amounts, 40 grams and 70 grams of protein after exercise or rest. What they found is interesting, that 70 grams of protein was better because it did two things. It stimulated muscle protein synthesis, but it also inhibited muscle protein breakdown, which resulted in a higher net protein balance. So the bigger picture is, while the classic 20 to 30 grams of protein might be enough to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, eating 40 to 50 grams per meal does help in reducing protein breakdown. Eating 40 to 50 grams per meal does help in reducing the breakdown of protein. So the net effect is potentially more muscle growth and better recovery. Additionally, what's becoming increasingly clear is that what really matters the most is your total protein intake at the end of the day. But does this mean that you can eat 100 grams of protein per meal? Let me explain this one in a very simple analogy. Think of muscle protein synthesis as a campfire. You're trying to keep the burning steady all day. Your muscles are the fire and the protein is the wood. To keep the fire burning, you need to throw on some wood a few times throughout the entire day. Just like you wouldn't toss all your wood into the campfire at once and expect it to last all day, you shouldn't eat all of your protein in one meal if you want to keep your muscle protein synthesis optimal and high throughout the entire day. The objective is to keep the fire burning steadily. With that being said, meeting your total protein requirement by the end of the day matters most more than how you spend and spread your protein over your meals. But the most optimal in regards to muscle growth and digestion, it is better to split it into at least three meals a day. So now I know you're wondering, how can we meet these high protein requirements? And this will bring me to question number three. Do we go for supplements or whole food? Which one will win? I'd only recommend getting all of your protein from natural sources of combined animal and plant-based sources. But working with so many clients, I know it's a big challenge for many people. And here's where I recommend a protein supplement. Protein supplements are safe and are among the highest quality protein intake. So they can be a great option for you when you can't meet your protein requirements through food. So 
protein hurting your kidneys is a total myth. If you don't already have kidney issues, I recommend one to two servings a day. Enough if you go up to three scoops a day is still safe. But remember, these need to be supplement to your diet. It's not a replacement to your diet. You still need to get fiber, vitamins, and minerals through your whole foods. And you can't get all of these just through shakes. I will also note with a lot of my clients, when you're on lower calories, I always recommend eating the foods to feel fuller. So if you're on lower calories, you're feeling hungry, you might want to take out the shakes and replace that with whole foods. Now you're also probably wondering, which protein supplement that I recommend. And I'll answer this after I go over question number four, because they're both relevant. If you don't want to take a protein supplement, you can absolutely meet your protein needs through whole foods. But which food sources you're probably asking? And this brings me to the fourth most important question. Animal protein versus plant protein, which one is superior? And this has been a topic of debate for decades. According to many studies and clinical trials, animal sources of protein like milk, your chicken, your eggs and beef have a higher quality when compared to your plant-based proteins like your lentils, your soy, your quinoa. And what do we mean exactly when we're talking about protein quality? We mean the amount of the nine essential amino acids of that protein, and that's gonna be directly related to its digestibility and hence its quality. And the protein digestibility and quality are measured by the DAS score, which stands for Digestible Indispensable Amino Acid Score. The DAS score measures two things. Number one, how many essential amino acids are in the protein? And number two, how easily our body can digest these amino acids. The reason animal protein is considered higher quality is because it has all the nine essential amino acids and it also has it to a higher digestibility. While most plant-based proteins will lack one or more essential amino acids, or they may have all nine, but in a fewer quantity. So we need to have a combination of both proteins. The best for muscle growth will have a combination of both plant-based and animal-based. In addition, one of these essential amino acids is called mucine, which plays a key role in kickstarting muscle protein synthesis. And like hypertrophy, imagine it like the key to start your car. Generally, animal sources have a higher amount of leucine than plant-based protein. So wrapping everything up, if you want to take your daily protein as food, a combination of both animal-based and plant-based protein will yield the best results for muscle hypertrophy. If you're a vegetarian, including in some dairy meals might make up for this. If you prefer to include protein supplements, your best option is a whey protein. It contains all the essential nine amino acids and it's also digestible. And it is also rich in the branch chain amino acids, your BCAAs, including Lucy. But for vegans, including a high quality protein supplement that is high in leucine would be superior to only eating your plant-based foods. Pea protein powders provides a complete amino acid profile and it's also higher in leucine compared to the other protein powders. Now, let's move on into the next question. How much protein is too much protein? Is there a limit? Multiple studies have shown that there is no health risk to taking the above daily recommended amount, even when going as high as 1.8 to even two grams of protein per pound, as long as you have healthy kidneys. However, usually following daily recommendations is better as consuming excessive amounts of protein at the expense of important nutrients like fats, carbs, and vitamins and minerals, it could lead to an imbalanced diet. All right, let's seal the deal. Let's talk about some takeaways. When it comes to protein, there's not a one size fits all. How much protein you should be taking really depends on your weight and your body fat and whether you're trying to lose, gain, or maintain your weight. When it comes to protein amounts per meal, it's better to distribute it over three to four meals or more within a day to achieve optimal muscle hypertrophy. When you can't meet your increased protein requirements solely through food, it's a good choice to go through a high quality protein supplement. Animal-based proteins in dairy have a higher quality and digestibility compared to plant-based ones. We achieve the best results by combining them both within a balanced diet. There there aren't any studies that pinpoint the adverse effects of taking the above recommended amount of protein, even when you go above your recommended daily amount. It's harmless, as long as you don't have any other health issues. And that is the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below what your current weight is or how tall you are. And let me know what your body fat percentage is. And I'll let you know what my protein recommendation for you would be in terms of your intake. And we'll leave it there. If you did enjoy this video, leave it with a gentle thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.